everybody, my name is Tanya and welcome to my Readorama wrap up. So Readorama was a week long readathon that ran from the something to the something. Good start Tanya. <laughs> so Readorama was a week long readathon that ran from the 28th of June to the 4th of July and I had a very successful reading week. Even if I did pick really really small short things that were easy to read, I'm still really happy. So there were a number of challenges and I'm going to run through what I read and which challenges I fulfilled. The first book I completed was Montana 1948 by Larry Watson. This is one of the books from my school books project. I read this one initially in year 11. Now what I've been doing with my school books is saying oh, I'm going to talk about those in an individual video at some point in time and that just hasn't been happening. So I've stalled after my year 7 books. I've now read the books from 8, 9, 10 and now started on 11 and I've not been making any videos. So I think I'm just going to start talking about the books, you know, the same as I do other books, if I end up making some videos for the school book project at some point all the better, but at least I'm talking about the books and addressing them at the time because I think it's been way too long since I've read some of these books to talk about them properly anyway, so... Anyway, for all that I've said I'm now going to talk about these books, there's probably not much I can say about this one without giving away the whole plot of this. So this one is narrated by the character of David and he's looking back uh, as an older man on things that happened in his youth and... I don't want to tell you what. <laughs> so basically this follows the character of David who was the only child of the town sheriff. His grandfather was sheriff before him and is quite an overbearing character uh, and he's the father of two sons, David's father and David's uncle Frank who is the town doctor and something that happens that throws a huge wedge between members of the family and nothing is ever the same again. And this one I read to complete the challenge of a reread. Next up I finished Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson which I have read for the challenge of reading a fantasy book. This one was the Year of Cosme pick for uh, June. I read the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson earlier in the year with Year of Cosme and this is another one that I own of his that I was really looking forward to. I had heard a lot of good things so I was really interested to go into this one and this was a lot of fun. So I didn't love this one quite as much as Mistborn I don't think but at the same time I probably enjoyed it more than Mistborn on different levels. I think that they're, they're very different books and not easily comparable. So again with this one Sanderson has created a very interesting magic system. This is a world where something has happened and now certain people are getting different powers and the powers vary wildly. So these people become what is referred to as an epic which is basically a superhero kind of person but the epics are very much uh, taken over by uh, the lust for power and are not so much heroes but more the villains of the story and so the powers that the epics have vary very much from epic to epic and where the magic system in Mistborn while very unusual and very creative is um, for the most part very uh, very well described and there are rules to it whereas with this one everything's very open and um, the kinds of powers that may be happening are not necessarily predictable. So obviously there's a fair bit more to be explored here. So this one follows the character of David and 10 years earlier David's father was murdered by the epic who is now in charge of the city and David has sworn revenge. So he's devoted his life to gathering information on the epics and finding uh, the weakness because every epic has a weakness but again what that weakness might be varies completely from epic to epic and it could be something as simple as a certain object being close by or the particular type of weapon or a specific set of circumstances uh, at the time that the attempt is made that uh, constitutes their weakness. So he's dedicated his life to finding out more about them and about these weaknesses and he's heard of a group called the Reckoners. Now the Reckoners are the only people that are kind of fighting back. It's a kind of underground movement that is um, taking down certain epics and David wants in and so it follows the story of him trying to join the Reckoners and ultimately what happens when he tries to take down Steelheart who is the epic in question. A lot a lot of fun I really really enjoyed it and I'm definitely interested in moving on to the next book in the series the way this ends it makes me very interested for the next book Fire Fight. Brandon Sanderson writes such epic stories basically he, he just yeah the next book I read was a total blast from the past and it was just so great and that was The Invasion by Kay Upgate which is the first book in the Animal series and I read this as the challenge of a reading middle grade book but it also would have worked for uh, a reread because it's something that I've read 
many times as a child and it also would have counted for the book with blue on the cover but the one that I'm counting for is the middle grade book and it was glorious. <laughs> so Animals as I've said before was a huge part of my childhood and I just revisiting this world was so wonderful. When I first started this I was a little bit worried because the writing is not all that great but I shouldn't have worried because a few pages later I was just completely caught up in it and just along for the ride and I loved it. So I'm sure you are no doubt aware Animorphs follows the characters of five teenagers who are gifted the power to uh, morph into any animal they uh, acquire, they touch and acquire their DNA and then they can change into that animal and they're fighting an alien invasion of a species uh, that are quite slug-like called the Yerks and they enter the brain of uh, other species and take over them and they become controllers and basically uh, the Eric is living inside their head and controlling their movements so anybody could be a controller and it's just it was wonderful I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this and I was so happy for the excuse to pick it up complete blast from the past but and like I said the writing not all that good dialogue pretty cheesy do I love it absolutely sometimes nostalgia is the best the next book I completed was for the challenge of reading an ebook, uh, and I didn't actually read it on my Kindle, I ended up reading it on my iPad, but that was Six Gun Snow White by Catherine Valente, and this was fantastic. So this one is like a, a short novella, and it's the story of Snow White, but kind of as a western, but so much more than that, and I thought it was phenomenal. So this is the first book by Catherine Valente that I've read, I've heard a lot of great things about her because of her Fairyland series. Uh, and also some other of her books on booktube but I've not heard much about this one but I loved it. The writing in this one was fantastic and the story was fantastic. Snow White in this story is uh, half white half crow. Her father married a crow woman and they had Snow White. Her mother died and she's raised uh, by her father and kind of uh, ignored. Then when Snow White is older he remarries and of course she suffers at the hands of her stepmother because that's how Snow White works and the name Snow White is gifted to her from her uh, stepmother for the white skin that she'll never have so instead of taking after her father she more takes after her mother's heritage and has darker skin and black hair and it follows the story of Snow White uh, fairly closely uh, in some respects but in other respects it's so much more and it was just great. So that got me to Saturday which was the last day of Rita Rama and I had finished four books which I was pretty happy with but I did have seven on my TBR and so I had an epic day yesterday trying to see how much I could get through and the answer to that is a lot. So the next book I completed was Peter Pan by Jane and Barry and this one was for the challenge of a book with Rama in the title and author and I had never read this before. And I don't know how I managed to have never picked this up but now I finally have and I am so pleased. So I have seen the Disney movie countless times, I've seen the early 2000s Peter Pan with Jeremy Sumter and I've seen Hook with Robin Williams, all of which I are really enjoyable but I never actually read Peter Pan and I am so glad I finally have because this was a lot of fun so it's uh, fun and it's you know dark and sad and disturbing and wonderful all rolled into one great package and really enjoyed it there are some scenes that I could completely see in my head you know that are very truly lifted from the story and, and put into the movie or when they're talking about the crocodile I'm seeing you know the cartoon crocodile coming along and so that kind of real visual thing that I was having, having been so familiar with the movies, was really interesting. I was interested to see how much more there'd be in this one than is in the movie adaptations. But I think the, the movies do a fairly good job of capturing uh, the essence of this one um, quite well. The character of Peter is a really interesting one and, you know, not necessarily the most likeable, but I really enjoyed reading about him. So I am so pleased to have finally checked this one off because... It's a classic. It's a classic I should have read. <laughs> the next book I read is another one that I never read in childhood and have been meaning to read for a very long time and another one that I've seen the movie of many many times and that was The Witches by Roald Dahl and I'm so excited to have finally read this one. I loved it. It was wonderful. It was you know gruesome and horrible but it was wonderful because that's what Roald Dahl is. He is gruesome and you know looks at the more despicable side of things and I love him for that because this follows the story of a young boy and his grandmother and what happens when she tells him all the ways he can recognize a real witch and real witches hate little children and want to squish them all and, and kill them off 
and what happens when he comes across the kind of yearly gathering of witches in England, which is attended by the Grand High Witch of the whole world, and runs afoul of them. In true Roald Dahl fashion, this is phenomenal and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I read this one for the challenge of a book with blue on the cover. So that was two books down for Saturday and that only left the challenge of reading seven books. And thankfully the last book that I had picked out on my TBR was a nice short one that perfectly fit the bill. And so the last book that I completed for Readerama was Macbeth by William Shakespeare. I listened to the LA Theatre Works production of this one alongside reading through this book and as I said uh, last month and in my TBR for Readerama I listened to Romeo and Juliet the same way, uh, listened to it and read along and I found that really enhanced the experience of uh, rereading Shakespeare and I did the same for this one and it was fantastic. So this was another one that I studied in year 11 at school, it was the second uh, school book that I read for this month. What I enjoyed most about this experience uh, and reading these copies which are not really appealing but were my original school copies is there are some notes that school friends have put in here along the way which made me giggle. So I've uh, marked a few things that I came across. We've got a little note on this page that says, Go hence and flowed to the sea and jumped off thy longest pier. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the book. Throw the book off the pier. Because uh, the person who made all these notes was not enjoying studying Macbeth at all. The next one is on this page here and this time she's written Hell, hell, tis but a crap of peace, art not to bear followers, but to be chucked in a burning blaze. So again, wants to chuck Macbeth into a fire because she's not enjoying the story. This next one just gets to the point. And then this last one is a little dialogue, uh, apparently. And so it's got two characters backwards and forwards. So why, tis this but of dullest desires. Cos my love, tis of lowest of lowest educate. What? Thee is not of good will, ho. All are uh, going to prove the point that uh, Macbeth is not a good book to study, apparently. <laughs> so I finished everything that I set out to read in the week of Read Rama, and I'm incredibly happy about this. So as always, if you've read any of these ones or have any questions or any comments you'd like to make about them, do let me know down in the comments. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!